What's up everybody? Welcome to more Heroes of the Storm and Color TV and we have another great match today. Kappa is going up against Bob. Two teams that you of course know and this is going to be a fun one. Tomb of the Spider Queen is again the map. It's getting really popular these days once again. And Kappa, they've shown their skills in the end of the Storm qualifier already against teams like Spartanian. Now they are rushing a setup on this map which has a lot of pushing power and also damage with a Zagara and a Zebo and also a Jaina in this case. So very very difficult to deal with but at the same time it leaves them also on the squishy side and they only have a Lili. They were forced to play Lili because of the picks and bans against the healers. So not really the best healer these days and at the front line it's a Terrier that they're using here. Bob on the other hand, they drafted a setup which is absolutely sick and I'm loving it because they are rushing not only in with a double warrior composition using Muradin and Johanna but they also added an Uther and uh, Taranda. So that means that they have now Muradin Taranda for the roaming squad. They have a stun on the side of Johanna as well, or more or less, with Condemn and then later of course Blessed Shield. And they have another stun on Uther and to round things up, because of course they need some damage, they put a Kel'thas into the mix. And Kel'thas at the beginning of the match might not be the hero that delivers all that much damage. He can be annoying, of course, with his Flame Strike and his Living Bomb, but at level 16 that's really where he gets dangerous. The thing is though, even before that, he has the gravity lapse. So Bob drafted a setup that just allows them to perma-stun any kind of target with the gravity lapse, the stun on all of the other heroes, and then drop in. That's exactly the idea that they're running here. One of the reasons why we don't see the Muradin and Tyranna composition uh, that often anymore is that now all the healers suddenly have cleanse. All of them except Lily. <laughs> Lily has an herbal cleanse on level 16, but she doesn't have a level 7 cleanse. So it's going to be pretty interesting to see how Kappa is going to try and deal with this. It's definitely not going to be easy. Bob are pretty happy about the setup that they run here, and we're going to jump into the game right now to find out which team is going to claim victory in this best of one to advance to the next round. The semi-final has started. It is a best of one and we are on Tomb of the Spider Queen. Bob is facing Kappa in this game. And I am very curious to see who is going to be able to win this one. The lineups that we see for the two teams are super interesting. We have to the left side now Bob currently running ADRD on Kelthas, Zarmany on Johanna, Snitch on Tyranda, Bakery on Uther and Athero Angel on Muradin. So a very, very cool setup when it comes to CC. Every single hero in this setup has at least one stun or one disable. To the right side of the map, it's Kappa with the Scape on Tyrael, Alistair on Jaina, Conti on Lily, Tomzi on Zagara, and Saifo on Azebo. And the really curious thing about this is that we are currently seeing an extremely aggressive setup for Kappa. They have so much damage on this lineup, especially of course with Nazebo, Zagara, Jaina. But they had to take Lili as their support because of the bans and the draft and already the like look at this aggression <laughs> That's exactly what I've said already earlier the chain CC is insane on this setup I'm not gonna lie boys. I personally expect Kappa to be slaughtered here and let's go about this for just a few seconds What is one of the reasons why we do not see Muradin and Tyranda as often as in the last patch anymore? The reason is simple. We have now suddenly cleanse on nearly every support hero. One of the few support heroes that doesn't have a cleanse on level 7 is Lily. And that means that all these stuns will go through. Lily has an herbal cleanse on level 16, but what exactly does that help her? Every single hero on the side of Bob currently has a stun. And it is crazy to deal with that. The damage is definitely there on the side of Kappa, don't get me wrong. If they gain momentum, if they can really push those lanes in and then maybe take down a few structures, they might be able to just carry this game with a momentum. But right now, the big problem that they are facing is that there is so much stun, so much single target damage, that it's nearly impossible to keep your heroes alive. The scape could potentially go into Sanctification on level 10 to help out with that. The problem then is though, how long is he going to be able to keep that Sanctification? up if you realize that every single hero for Bob has an uh, interrupt and there's no CC on the side of of Kappa but Zarmany is dying and you know why because Kappa has an insane amount of damage here that's exactly the point they don't have the CC but they have the damage and they might be able to kill ADRD Kappa is getting the second kill in well, Bob, they have what they need there, but of course they also need to uh, just hit those spells. Muradin was not able to hit his first initial stun, and if that doesn't work, then all of a sudden you are in trouble. And now we have Kappa even in the lead. 
I'm still very curious if they can make this work because I personally doubt it, but they had a plan and they must have seen this coming, the setup that we're now seeing from Bob. So they must have said, all right, we can deal with this and I'm super curious to see how exactly they're going to do that. I'm very interested because they have a plan. This team is really good. They're really solid. I'm not seeing it, but that's why I'm depending on them here. Stun after stun after stun. Oh, and not no kill against the Zebo, but nearly the kill against Muradin. Yeah, I guess they could have killed the Zebo there with a bit of a better timing with the first two stuns, but still, it kind of shows that it might not be as easy as they thought. Tyrell is providing a shield, Conti on uh, Lily is providing a bit of heal. It's still a slight leading experience for Kappa, and I'm liking the way that they are starting into this game, but of course we have Netherwind now taking level 4 for Kalthos. Down here, there is one stun, two, and they're trying to get the stun chain in, and just like that, Zagara is dead. It's a big problem currently for Kappa that they do not have any escapes on most of their heroes. There's no escape for Jaina, no escape for Nazebo, and no escape for Zagara. All these heroes will get their opportunity later. Level 13, for example, will at least grant an ice block and a sprint or ice block to Nazebo, but Zagara doesn't have anything and that is going to become a problem. Now the teams are of course fighting for domination for uh, like the map control and that's currently what exactly happens in the mid lane here. Yeah? Once again, Zarmany starting to move in, there's the first stun, the second one coming in, they're getting a very nice setup here to drop Nazebo now as well. Very well done here once more, and that's exactly the problem that Kappa will have in this game, trying to stay alive on these heroes, because the rotations that we are seeing uh, from their opponent are very strong. And of course, Bob is trying to use that advantage, to capitalize on it, because they need to do that, especially in the early game. They're roaming through the map from the mid to the top, the mid to the bot, and always trying to just like drop another target. And the more they can take down, the better for them. Here comes the first stun, second uh, coming in as well, and Lili is going to fall. They need to make sure that all those gems are not going to end up in the hands of the uh, red team. But it is actually the red team turning in their gems first. They don't have access to the level 7 talent yet, but still, at least for now, we are having them pushing the lanes. Down to the bot lane, Zarmany is going to start to get his moves in. We're having also now Fission Bomb taken on 7 for, of course, uh, Kel'Thas. Kel'Thas is really a hero that will provide a lot of the damage in the later stage of the game when he hits level 16, but it's not like he's useless before that either. And that's mainly because he adds an additional stun to the setup. He has now his uh, gravity laps, and with this, he will be able to really help out when it comes to that CC chain that they're trying to apply. The top lane is being de-pushed. Kel'Thas is doing his thing. ADRD here in the second. We're having Luna Blaze now taken for the increased range on the flare, which is going to make it even easier for Snitch to get those in. Also, of course, we have Piercing Bolt taken, which is for Muradin pretty cool. So there's not really going to be the scenario where suddenly somebody can just walk in front of the Storm Bolt and tank that out so that the uh, stun target is not going to be dropped again or not locked down for too long. Mid lane again, another setup, and there we go. One stun, two stun, and goodbye, Jaina. Five kills against two. The early game was maybe not as uh, not as like uh, clear as they were hoping for. Not as dominant, but right now they are really finding uh, the, slow, the they're, they're really getting their flow down. The thing is though, they should not focus on Lily anymore because Lily by now has shaken off. She's probably the worst target at this point. We're having a double battle momentum, by the way. One on Zagara and the other one on. Uh, Tyriel, who went for Regeneration Master and Amplified Healing. Very tanky build for Tyriel here. It's pretty cool if you have those two talents working together, because Amplified Healing also procs off the Regeneration Globes that you uh, take up from the Regeneration Master. So it's a sick regeneration you're going to have then later on. It's very, very strong. But especially in the late game, of course, that's going to be a thing. For now, it's more about this early game, and now the Web Weavers are coming to play for the blue team too. So Bob is going to push those in. And, yep, there we have it. We have already uh, the wall about to fall. Bot lane, the same thing. Bakery is there. Starting to push in now, too, helping out the Web Weavers. At the top lane, the rotation is still happening. And the Blue Web Weavers are certainly doing a lot of work. The first wall is down. Down to the bot lane, we still have Uther doing his thing, also soaking of course experience for the team and that means that they have the level 10 ability a bit faster. With Phoenix that is already being used, Blast Shield, another stun, we have Divine Shield 
Muradin, of course, with the Avatar form, and also, in this case, now Starfall taken. The first four is immediately down, and there's still no level 10 for the opponent's team. So with this happening, there's no opportunity for them to move out onto the map and turn in again. They have 43 gems, but they can't turn those in for as long as they don't have the level 10 ability, and that allows Zarmany to take uh, to turn his in, and that's an additional Web Weaver Wave. They can turn in an additional one. They have 40 gems still available, and I'm actually not quite sure what exactly they're waiting for. Snitch and Athero Angel are probably trying to take down Tomsey. Baker River's moving in for the first initial stun, but he doesn't get this one off. So they need to turn in again. Then they have a second Web Weaver Wave, and in the meantime, they are trying to take down that camp. Now they still don't. They're still not turning in though. They have enough, but they do not turn in. Well, we had a few turned in, at least for now. But now it's level 11 versus level 10, and that, of course, means that the heroic abilities are ready for Kappa, which means Judgment over Sanctification for very good reason. I mean, we've talked about this earlier. There are so many interrupts against the judgment, uh, against Sanctification that it doesn't really do you any good. Water Elemental taken, Jug of a Thousand Cups, more, and Gary the Gargantuan. Moving in again. First stun, second stun. They go for Lily, even with Shake It Off, and they are able to drop her. Oh, actually, sorry, it wasn't a Zeebo. My bad. I was for a second really surprised. Yeah, my bad. It wasn't a Zeebo that they dropped. And in this case, they're trying to also take down Tyrael. They get the stun. Oh, the Maw! Really good Maw! But they're moving back. And, oh, that was really well done. Iron Skin used. And Tyrael goes down. Judgmenting in upon Johanna and Zarmany like a panther. I mean, the reaction time of this guy is unreal. Right away, when he saw Judgment being used, he immediately activated Iron Skin and made sure that nothing happened. And Tyrael just basically judgmenting into his doom. So now, level 12 versus level 10. We're seeing 7 kills against 2 on the board. 37 additional gems, by the way. 56 on the side of the opponent's team, which in this case is, of course, Kappa. At the bot lane, there's an attempted push. Already the Phoenix being used to put additional pressure onto those two towers. And the Webweaver should be able to go through the tower, maybe even the fort. As at the top lane, we see a rotation happening now. With Zarmini and everybody else moving in right away to drop now to fort number two. With Zagara actually rotating down to face this push. And that might save the keep, to be honest with you. I think she's going to be able to take down the Webweaver. It's actually a pretty, pretty fair assumption, I'd say. So for now, we're having at the top lane with a level 13 talent. Again, Bob pushing. And so they should. They have Flamethrower now. They're having the overflowing light that they can use to put additional heals out. There's also a Shrink Ray. I mean, like, if you need more CC, then why not? I mean, crowd control is everything here. And having that Shrink Ray is helping you once the Terrier jumps in. I guess you can use it for any hero that is there. They drop the fort, and now they move straight to the mid lane again, where they are attempting to drop the wall at the keep. But... Kappa is struggling. It's way too much CC. Those stuns are insanely difficult to deal with. And at this point, we're having nearly another <laughs> trying to stun out the tumor so that they can take it down. But yeah, a quick jump on Athera. Angel deals with that. So for now, 54 additional gems that they could turn in. They need 60, so they need 6 more. And uh, well, that's exactly the amount that is currently down here at the bot lane. So they could get another set of web weavers immediately if they wanted to. Over here, Conti is trying to turn his 35 gems in. AD already is there. Conti with a stun. Gravity Labs. They're getting some damage in. And there comes the Lunar Flare now. A Starfall used. And goodbye, Tyrael. Kill number 8. And Athero Angel, he is going to survive. They can turn in again. They have 63 gems now. So if they all turn in, then they will have an immediate next wave of Web Weavers. And that could potentially also drop one of the keeps. They have already eliminated the, for, for the fort up at the top lane. And the fort down here in the mid lane is also dead. At the bottom lane, well, it's still alive, but it also suffered some damage. And right now, Kappa is just on the run, and I really don't blame them. On level 13, they are finally going to get some ice blocks. So the ice blocks are going to be really important. Without those, I don't think that you have a chance in the world to really survive this onslaught that we're seeing from Bob. On 16, on the other hand, then we are going to see Ignite, and that's a completely different ball game. Then Lily will have a uh, yeah, pretty difficult time healing out all of that damage without heroic ability. Maybe if they get level 20 and she gets Kung Fu Hustle, it's going to be a bit easier. But for now, it's really just Bob calling the shots here. They are moving in again. They have level 15 versus level 12. The level 13 talent is not going to hit anytime soon. They need half a level before that happens. And in that time, we might see the first keep fall. The Web Weaver down at the bot lane, of course, is going to go through the fort here. There's no way that they can save this one. The top lane is also getting pressured now. The wall about to fall, and that's why Tomsey had to rotate to the top to make sure that he gets at least this Web Weaver out of the game. But over here, 
the keep is starting to take some damage thanks to the Phoenix, and everybody is moving in right now. Before the level 13 talent hits and all of those ice blocks are on the, the uh, line, well, they are not getting the kill though. They're not getting it. Good stun, but no follow-up just yet. Has to move back, at least for now. Where Beaver, the bot lane, went through the fort and is now dealing with the last tower that we are seeing here. So the 13 talent should hit any second now for Team Kappa. And that might be exactly what they need to come back into this game. So expect Ice Blocks. There's the first one. First Ice Block is being used. Shrink Ray on Lily. Suppose that helps a bit. Uh, we have also... No spell shield or anything. It's Mutalist that's been taken. All right. And the Ice Block on Azebo. Could have gone for a spell shield, I suppose, but, well, pretty desperate move. You want to have them either, that's for good reason. There's the level 16 talent, and that, of course, puts Ignite now into the hands of Kelthas, who finally is able to go in to deal some damage. He's like, yay, I'm not useless anymore. I can do more than only Gravity Lapse heroes. I can actually do damage. Yay. Whee. So we have Blessed Hammer on the side of Johanna for more damage, and why not? And as we already had a level 4 Pierce taken, we now see Ranger as an additional talent. So that's additional damage that we're seeing from Tyranda too. Benediction and stone form. And the web weavers, guess what? Are being released again. This time for the red team though. Oh, ice block. Nice. Cypher with a quick ice block, making sure that this time they are, he's not going to take it out by the uh, stun combo. And that's exactly what they needed. I mean, the ice block is really important. On level 16, the herbal cleanse on Lily is going to help to a certain extent as well. And then later on in the game, we're going to see a few bolt of the storms that really help out. The problem is that even the web weavers that the red team finally got in, they don't do anything. I mean, they're not even deep pushing the lanes. They can't move out because they're so far behind and lack the level 16 talents that they cannot really go with the web weavers. So the only thing that Bob is doing now is just moving from one lane to another, burst down the web weavers, and then they are still calling the shots and still in complete map control, which is a huge problem for the opponent's team. They have 35 gems. They need 30 more to get another web weaver wave. But, oh, the escape. Wow, that was close. That gravity lapse hits once, and then you are not in trouble, then you're basically dead. If that gravity lapse hits you, then there's going to be a Lunar Flare just right after that. We're going to see a lot more damage coming in, thanks to the Ranger's Mark on Tyranda, and of course not forgetting the damage that we are seeing, or like the stuns that we are seeing on the side of Uther and also Muradin, so you'll have no chance of surviving that. They're turning it again. It's eight kills against two right now. And what is Kappa doing? Kappa is a bit desperate right now. They are trying to just like move... I mean, they're trying to get experience. They move from one lane to another just like getting these waves. The waves are pushing in against them so they don't have to move out onto the map too far. They're just rotating from one lane to another. But it also means that every single camp that is on the map can be taken by Bob without being afraid. They should actually take down these walls because they grant vision now to the opponent's team and that is really annoying since... Well, Kappa knows exactly about the rotations that are currently happening, and you should probably try and leave them in the dark at least a bit. Snitch and the boys are currently trying to take down these tumors. We had on level 7 for Zagara, as already mentioned before, battle momentum taken, so no endless creep. Should be a bit easier to snipe those. Now that keep is probably gonna fall. I don't think they can really hold on to that, or can they? Wall of Zombies trapping Bakery, he doesn't care, he still has this Divine Shield up, and yeah, the keep falls without a fight. They're just posturing around, saying like, hey, we're here, don't attack, and Bob's just like, yeah, so what, like, try and fight us. We're gonna lock you down once again, and then we're gonna take the keep anyways. So now they're moving to the bot lane, and it's really tricky for Kappa, I mean, what can Kappa do? I actually don't know. Like, they, they need to try and just play passive, maybe get a lucky kill, a bit of damage in, drop them low, and then burst somebody down. They have no lockdown. There's no lockdown. With a good more as a setup, they might be able to make something happen here, but it's just such a tricky position for them to be in. It's really frustrating, I, I think. Half a level, they are behind half a level still before they hit level 16. That's that's what they need here. But there's another Phoenix. There's a huge Siege Giant camp coming in right now with extra damage. Dropping the well, putting pressure on to keep number two. They already lost the first one and they are being checkmated here. They're in a checkmate position. They need a great more if they really want to make anything happen there. And Bob is just playing this very careful. Are they maybe playing a bit too careful? Like, I don't know. I don't really think so. They have a lot of gems that they can now turn in again. It's not enough yet to get another Webweaver wave. But another Webweaver wave would already do a whole lot of damage. Bakery collecting the gems that were just dropped a second ago. So now that the level 16 talent is about to hit, we're probably going to see... Uh, well, first of all, 
we're going to have the leaping spiders which are annoying double yeah holy ground for the zoning i guess not too bad like that can help you as well what else would you get of course blood for blood is cool but the problem is if you are the one being locked down you won't have a chance to really use that so much better to use the holding ground for zoning purposes throughout the game we're having also now a numbing blast taken the herbal cleanse that was a bit of a no-brainer but it's still level 16 versus level 16 in talents so the three level lead that we're seeing is a nice stat advantage for bob but it's not something where they can capitalize on an extra talent they have the web weavers down coming down again though and one stun here we go conti is moving in and herbal cleanse in this case helping out of course we're also seeing the holy ground now for zoning and they did not get a kill with this particular combo but here comes also the phoenix again and they are pushing everything in once more the web weavers are on the way and this is where bob is trying to make a stand they're going straight in against the zebo again the zebo the war is good though and they get the kill against kelthas kelthas down right at the beginning of the fight and another ice block for alistar everybody's so low drop against jaina Good move by Snitch on his Saranda. He's getting this one last stun in to take Jaina down. So it's a kill for a kill here. Both of the mages are dead, but they are focusing on Tyrael once more with the Ranger's Mark. And Tyrael! Oh, gets locked down again, but he had the shield up already. Even the Owl is hitting, but they can't get the kill. And another Ice Block, this time from the Zebo, saves him for now. Very resilient on the side of Kappa, moving back like this. But the bot lane keep is now being attacked by the web weavers, and this is where Bob is focusing their attention upon once again. They are going to try and take at least one keep down. The top lane is also being pushed, and it doesn't look good for this keep either. So one of the bot lane saved for now. Zarmany actually low. Bakery needs to be careful. They had escape. Is he going to try and follow? He's not. The level 20 talent is now there, and that means all of the storm for Kelthas. We have indestructible for Johanna. Wow, the keep survives. Not for long, though. Like, no matter what hits the keep, it's gonna fall here. But yeah, we're seeing a rewind now for Tyranna too. So that means double stun during those fights. Double owl as well. Redemption taken. And yeah, very, very cool moves here on the side of Bob. But I like how resilient Kappa played in the last second. And there's a trap at the boss. They're starting to move in right now, but... It's a trap! And Tyriel is not going to make it, is he? No, Tyriel is down. The more used. No explosion there. That damage didn't do anything. And in comes Muradin. Jumps in. Tomsey eating a lot of damage thanks to the Ignite. Nice okay, stun. And one out. And the second stun coming in. Rewind being used. Snitch is using every single spell in his arsenal to drop Zagara. They are about to drop Jaina as well. Jaina is dead now. Snitch and AD already doing the deed. And over here we have now Zarmany trying to take down Sypho. Actually, they rotate back. They just say, like, why would we chase? Why would we chase the Witch Doctor? Why would we chase the Zeebo? We can simply go for the kill right now. The keep is dead. Take this one down, and then we can still rotate over. Take boss. Take the Web Weavers again if we have enough gems, which is, in this case, not happening. So they just go for the boss. They know that there are still two heroes dead, and it's a dominant play on the side of uh, Bob. They won the draft. They won it heavily. And Kappa is being destroyed. They are being absolutely destroyed right now. So much stun on the side of Bob. They are doing what they were supposed to do with this composition. Aggression, 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 aggression. Stun after stun after stun. Rotations on the map from start to finish. Always making sure that all these squishies don't stand a chance. After level 16, there was a lot more that Kappa could do. And they did whatever, they, whatever was possible to them with all those ice blocks. I guess if they wouldn't have fallen behind this much in the early stages of the game, they might have still had a chance there. But even with the ice blocks that they had and all those escape skills, it was just way too much. Now Bob is going for the kill. Alistar already eating the first owl. Uses his cone of call. Judgment being used. They're trying to go for Kelthas, but there's nothing that they can do right now. Once again, the attack's happening. The stun's everywhere. Snitch is extremely low, though, but the Divine Shield saves him. He gets the owl hit. Stun after stun. Jumps in. Muradin tries to take down the escape. The core is already losing hit points while this brawl is still ongoing. Nice ice block here on the side of Jaina. Keeps herself alive for another second, but dies in the end after all. The core already down to 50. Here comes the star for applying additional damage. And now, of course, with more ignite, we see even more heroes dying. Tyrael is dead. So is Lily. And this game is over. Bob takes down Kappa. Very well played here. And advances now to the final of the end of the Storm Qualifier. Number four.
Wow. Ball pretty much destroyed Kappa in this game. That CC train that we had there hit hard. That was a pain train, and, well, you could, like, it was just crazy, right? At level 13, finally, we had a few things that Kappa could do to mitigate some of the damage with all the ice blocks that they had. But before that already, they got wrecked, and they fell very far behind. Bob just moved in with stun after stun after stun, and once the first one hit you, you were in trouble. Especially Kelthas always preparing those with the Netherwind that he chose on level 4, just rushing those in. Yeah, just basically making sure that he disabled one or two targets, and then everybody was jumping in from the sides, pummeling down on those heroes, taking them out, and at this point there was just nothing that Kappa could do. They were trying to turn it around then later on when they finally had a bit of a chance, but of course also Kelthas hitting 16 didn't really help their cause. And with the mid game completely being controlled by Bob, they just got turn in after turn in after turn in, and with the help of those web weavers, they could take down the structures, secure an even bigger lead in experience, and therefore, of course, gain an even bigger advantage towards the late game. Very well played by Bob. They move now on in the tournament. Kappa, unfortunately for them, is out, but they were still able to reach the semifinals, so they get a fair amount of points here for the qualifier ranking, which is, of course, everything that counts. And yeah, I hope that you guys enjoyed the video here. Keep in mind this composition, like don't try that at home. That is actually like pretty dangerous. No jokes aside, like if you get the chance to actually draft that in Hero League or with a couple of mates playing quick matches, Team League or whatnot, then definitely give it a shot because it's a lot of fun to play with this much stun. But yeah, the game of course is over and therefore I hope that you guys had a blast watching that. There's going to be more videos coming your way. If you enjoyed it, make sure that you drop it a thumbs up on YouTube and also if you have any questions then just put a comment in the comment section. I'm going to see you guys soon with even more videos here on the channel. So have a great day. Bye-bye.